The following animation may contain triggers for people experiencing safety issues or family violence. If you or someone you are with is in immediate danger, call triple zero. Remember, you can leave this website quickly using the quick exit button to your right. This video takes you through the usual process of a family law matter involving children. However, every case is different and depending on the needs of your family, the process may be handled a bit differently. If you find yourself here at court, it can be a stressful time. So I'm going to take a few minutes to explain what you can expect once the process starts. Before applying to the court and where it is safe to do so, you are obligated to try to resolve your dispute by mediation. You can find more information about separating smarter here. But if you do find yourself at court, there are certain steps you will need to take, including forms to complete and information you need to share. You will need legal advice and support. You can begin with services such as these, or engage a solicitor experienced in family law. If you need emotional support or want to find a local support service, call 1800 RESPECT. And if you need legal help or support with a family law issue, call the Family Advocacy and Support Service in your location. Okay, so why does the court need information? At court, the primary focus is prioritising everyone's safety and making decisions in the best interests of children. To help the court make decisions, you need to tell us about any family violence and your safety concerns. Here's how. When you file your first documents, you will be required to complete a notice of child abuse, family violence or risk form. You need to share the details of what you are experiencing and your concerns and include your evidence in an affidavit. This will be used in court and is seen by the other party. Completing these documents openly and honestly helps the court take account of family violence and risk when deciding your case. In a parenting case, you may also be asked to answer some important questions about risks such as family violence by completing a confidential online questionnaire. These answers are not shared with the other party. Based on your responses, you'll be guided towards many support services that you or your children might need, and your matter will be case managed in a way that is consistent with the identified risks. So now you're in the court system, I'm going to walk you through what a general court pathway might look like. Depending on the type and seriousness of risk, your court pathway may vary. You may hear terms that are new to you. On the website, you'll find a fact sheet of this pathway and a document on legal words used in court. Let's take a look at your first court event, which will be a hearing held about eight weeks after the case starts. It will usually be before a judicial registrar and will most likely take place online. However, if your case is urgent or there is a serious risk of harm to you or your child, your first court event may take place within a few days of filing and will be before a judge or senior judicial registrar. They will have read the documents you have filed and may make orders for additional information to be provided before the matter can progress further. So what happens next? Your case may require an interim hearing where family arrangements are put in place until a final decision is made. Orders might also be made for a child impact report to be prepared by a child expert. This will help you and the court to hear from your child about their experience and can inform the interim arrangements put in place. While you might think you're about to go to trial before a judge, your case may require further steps. For example, rather than a trial, your matter could be resolved in a mediation. This is a confidential process and will be conducted by a different registrar, sometimes with a child expert. A mediation can also be undertaken with a private mediator or other service provider, such as legal aid or a family relationships centre. 
This could be your best opportunity to take ownership of your dispute and to influence the arrangements for your child. Resolving your matter through mediation can be done safely, often electronically, and is usually the fastest way to a resolution. If mediation is unsuccessful and it's decided your case requires a decision from a judge, before you go to trial, your material will be checked at a compliance and readiness hearing. A registrar will make orders about what you are to prepare for this hearing. You must comply with the orders. You can feel confident that if your matter goes to trial, there can be protections put in place for your safety. At trial, the judge will consider all the evidence, which may be tested through cross-examination. If your case involves family violence, you cannot be cross-examined by the other parent, but you could be cross-examined by their lawyer or a lawyer provided by legal aid. The final decision from the judge will explain how and what has been considered and how court orders promote the safety and well-being of your child. Remember that once court orders are made, they are legally binding and all parties must comply. There are potential consequences if orders are ignored and there are ways that the court can ensure its decision is complied with. The court takes family violence and the safety of you and your family very seriously. Remember, family violence is never okay. Make sure to watch our other videos to understand more about family violence and the court process. You can find more helpful information and links on the FC FCOA website.